video editing and everything associated with it is a brilliant art form for me. It all started for me over 10 years ago when I first published my videos together with Sven. And even back then I wanted to have cool animations in my videos, but I didn't have anyone to teach me. So I downloaded terribly ugly animations from random stock footage sites, replaced a few texts and voila, these incredibly beautiful results came out. Now I finally know how to animate properly, so get ready for years of animation experience condensed into a few minutes. Because today I'll show you three cool text animations that you can use in your social media content afterwards. By the way, if I'm too fast with anything in this video, I also offer a complete and precise course on text animation with Adobe After Effects where I dive into the absolute basics over on Skillshare. Or if you don't feel like animating yourself at all, I have my essential text package with various pre-made text animations on my website. You can find links to both in the description box, but that's enough advertising, let's finally see some content. We start with this beautiful box with a line around it. And the first thing we have to do is create a new composition. We'll be setting it to 3840 by 2160 pixels, which is exactly 4K with a duration of 10 seconds and name it stroke box. Then we grab the text tool and write any text here in the middle. We can then configure and customize it as we want. I'll use the font poppins and maybe make it a bit larger. Next, we'll select the rectangle tool here at the top because we'll be drawing a rectangle over our text to animate its path. But make sure you have the text layer selected. Because if we were to create a rectangle without selecting the text layer, it would create a new shape layer. However, we want to have it as a mask because as you see, all parts of the text outside of the mask will disappear and we'll use that for the sliding motion later on. So after we've nicely centered our mask around our text, we take care of the path by applying an effect called stroke. In the settings for our stroke effect, there are a few things that are probably self-explanatory, such as color and size. The value we're actually interested in is the end value, because when we adjust it, you can already see our path slowly disappearing. The start value would do the same thing, by the way, but from the other side. So we create a keyframe for the end value, set it to 0%, move a few frames forward and set it back to 100%. And voila, here's the first part of our animation, our path appears. Now we can make that animation a little smoother by selecting both keyframes and pressing F9, which will create a smooth start and stop for the animation. This is, by the way, also known as E. Now we need to add the second part of our animation, which is the text sliding in from the side. However, there is a small problem, because if we animate the position property of our layer, it will move the entire layer, including our path. And that's not exactly what we want. So we'll use a text animator as an additional helper. To access it, simply click animate right here on your text layer and then select position, because that's the value we want to animate. Now, if we increase the value here, you can see that it only moves our text. So let's create two Two keyframes again, one on the far right and another one at our initial position. And once again, we select both keyframes, press F9, et voila, our frame box animation is complete. Now let's move on to the next effect, this puddle effect. The first few steps are identical. We create a new composition with the same settings as before and we name it puddle. So how do we achieve this animation where it looks like our text is flowing in a sort of like a puddle? For that, we'll use an effect called Mr. Mercury. Before applying it to our text layer, let me quickly demonstrate what this effect does by applying it to an image. What you can see here is that the effect transforms our image into a thick viscous substance that originates from the center and then falls down. And we can adjust several settings here. The radius of X and Y determines the area where new drops will appear. So if I increase it, eventually drops will appear all over the image. Or if I set it to zero, they will only appear in the center. And the producer position allows us to adjust the center of our producer. Then there are other values such as the velocity, which controls how fast new drops appear, the birth rate, which determines the number of new drops, the longevity, which sets how long a drop remains before disappearing, and the gravity, which represents the strength of gravity pulling the drops downward. You can also choose different animations like explosive for faster drops or fire for a much gentler effect. The blob size allows you to specify the size of new drops as they appear and disappear. I would recommend playing around with these values a little until you achieve your desired result. Now let's apply the effect to our text layer and I'll show you the values that work well for me. I set the radius to 150 
percent for both values because we want the entire text to gradually appear throughout the composition, filling the entire screen after a few seconds. I'll leave the producer in the center and the direction as is. I've increased the velocity to 1.8 to make the drops appear a little faster and I decrease the birth rate to 0.4 because I prefer fewer but larger drops. I've also set the longevity to 5 because once the text appears I want it to stay visible. And for the gravity I actually set it to 0 because we wanted to resemble a puddle when looking from above. So there is no gravity. Now let's leave the rest of the settings as they are except for the blob birth size because we'll use this to ensure that our text animates in slowly and then remains visible afterwards. So we add a keyframe with a value of 2.5 at the beginning and by the end of our composition it grows to 20. Et voilà, here's our animated puddle. Nice. Next, we have this effect that you've probably seen on YouTube before, that wiggle text with slightly wobbling edges. The initial steps are, as expected, exactly the same. We create a new composition, name it wiggle text and use the text tool to add a text to the center of our composition. To achieve these wobbling edges, we use an effect called roughen edges. And as the name suggests, it roughens the edges. The most important value that we can adjust here is the thickness of the edges, which I'll set to eight. And we'll leave the rest of the settings just as they are. Now, now, we have rough edges now, but they are not wobbling yet. To add that wobbling effect, we go to the evolution options, specifically the random C. Because every time we change this value, the edges are randomly recalculated. Now, instead of animating this value with a keyframe, which would result in a very fast and hectic wobbling on every frame, we'll use an expression instead. So hold down the Alt key and click on the stopwatch, just as you would when creating a keyframe. Now, this will open up a window where we'll simply enter time times four. So if you still find it too fast, you can increase that multiplier accordingly. But what if I haven't shown you your favorite animation in this video? Now you can check if it's included in my essential text package, link is as mentioned in the video description.